there are five parts to a semen analysis. And we will break them down into one, the volume, two, the sperm concentration, three, the sperm motility, four, the what we call the forward progression of the sperm and five we're going to call sperm morphology or the shape of the sperm so we have five parts to the semen analysis. So of the five steps, we're going to start with talking about volume. And a normal semen specimen can range anywhere from, say, as low as 0 0.1 m milliliters all the way to the point where it is greater than even 10 milliliters. But the normal one functions at about 1.5 mLs. The value that you see of 1.5 mLs is the latest value that is being cited by the World Health Organization. And the World Health Organization produces a manual every few years that gives the latest values. It so happens that we are using, we are talking about the 210. This is the latest edition of the World Health Organization Laboratory Manual for the examination and processing of human semen. When a physician sees the report and sees that this specimen is say less than one and a half milliliters, it falls in this range right in through here, then he starts to wonder what particularly could have been the problem. And it could be something as simple as, one, the person who produced the semen specimen did not wait for the minimum 48 hours. So he produced, he gave the specimen in less than 48 hours of abstinence, okay? That could be one of the problems for being less than 1.5 mils. Another possibility could be that the patient simply lost a portion of the specimen. Or it could be that the seminal vesicles or and other glands that you have just simply failed to produce sufficient volume. The second part of the semen analysis, this is called sperm concentration, and the normal value for that is greater than or equal to 15 times 10 to the 6th sperm per milliliter, or in other words, 15 million per milliliter of semen. If that value is less than this, that, it may be because of an, an abnormal endocrine value, or it may be due to a 
ductile occlusion. The third part of a semen analysis is called the sperm motility. And the normal value for this is greater than or equal to 40% moving. So out of every 100 sperm, you have to have at least 40 of them moving. If they are not, then it could possibly be from, say, the patient had collected the semen sample and it is from the time he collected it to the time that it was the analysis was performed was greater than 60 minutes then the motility sometimes declines it could be that the it was not collected into a sterile container and in our laboratory we check each lot of containers to make sure that they are not only are they sterile, but also that they will support, say, embryo development, which is one of our main criteria. And then it could be that this sperm motility is low simply because you have a high concentration of white blood cells, a concentration that would perhaps be greater than 1 times 10 to the 6th per ml. The fourth part of a semen analysis is called forward progression. and is divided into four categories, rapid, medium, slow, or stagnant. And they're often given values. For instance, rapid would be given a value of four, medium would be given a value of three, slow would be given a value of two, and stagnant would be given a value of zero to one. Then the andrologist, the person that's evaluating the semen specimen, would then determine what the percent movement is in a semen specimen. For instance, let's say that the andrologist said that 25% of all the sperm were moving very rapidly. And perhaps 10% of the semen specimen were moving medium. Perhaps 5% of them were moving very slowly. And the rest of that percentage would be sperm were just not moving or just vibrating in place. And this would be our 100%. Then you multiply these values together. 4 times 25 would give us a value of 100. 3 times 10 would be 30. 2 times 5 would be 10. And 0 times 60, of course, is 0. And this would give us a total value of 140. The normal value that we are looking for is greater than or equal to 100. So this individual would have a normal forward progression. If in fact the values were less than 100, remember we would go back to that, those indicators we talked about for motility. For instance, number one we said was that it was collected greater than 60 minutes previous to the analysis. We said that it was maybe in a, collected in a non- sterile container and we also said that under number three that it may be that the WBC's white blood cells were greater than one times ten to the six per ml. 
The fifth and final portion of a semen analysis is called the sperm morphology or basically the shape of the sperm. And the 2010 World Health Organization manual says that a normal semen specimen should have 4% of the sperm being shaped normally. That means that the head, which is kind of oval, it has a cap on it, an acrosomal cap if you must. It has a long tail that tends to decline in size and you have a neck region and you actually have in the middle piece they would call it the mid piece or so they may even call it down into here you get down to the main piece and finally down into here is the end piece and all of this then makes up the tail any part of this that is misshaped anything in here that is misshaped then makes it abnormal and falls into any category from uh, a two heads and one tail to tails and one head or a, a head that is just really amorphous if you will um, maybe it's got a very short tail any of these could then fall into that category of abnormality. Unfortunately, we do not know what causes this poor morphology. But what we do think is that this sperm morphology may be the most significant factor in determining fertilization in assisted reproductive technology. So to summarize then, a physician will get a Siemens analysis back that will tell you that the semen specimen was either normal, in other words, all the values are within the normal range, so that the, you know, our volume and our concentration and our motility and our forward progression and even our morphology are all normal within the WHO 2010 ranges that we talked about. It could come back as borderline and that perhaps means that all but one of these values across here is within normal range and that that one value still must be fairly close to being normal. For instance, remember we said that the volume might, uh, had to be 1.5 mLs. Well, if all the rest of these values are within normal range, but our patient has, say, a range of, uh, excuse me, a volume of 1.3 mLs, then he would fall under the borderline because he's almost normal. His his volume is a little low, but all the rest of these are fine. But he could, patient could come back as abnormal, and that would say that two or more of these values uh, are abnormal, or it could be just simply that one of these values is abnormal. For instance, let's say that the, the volume was down here at 0.5 mLs. That's too far off of the 1.5 that is normal. And so this particular person's semen specimen would come back as abnormal, even though maybe his concentration, motility, forward progression, and morphology are still all 
in the normal range except for this one value. And with that, this ends the lecture on semen analysis.